incredibly excited right now as we're driving up to the 5,000 meter altitude plateau that is home to the radio telescopes of ALMA Observatory. And I'm currently with Sean Doherty, who is the director of ALMA, and also the lovely chap who wrote the foreword to my book Photographing the Night Sky, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. I'll put a link in the description down below. But it's actually my second visit to the plateau, but the first time I came back in 2019, it was the night of a gibbous moon, and so I didn't get to see the dark skies. Well, it certainly would have been the darkest skies I've ever seen, but thankfully tonight, as we're driving up, the moon is setting, and I should be greeted with the darkest skies I've ever seen, so super excited. Oh yeah. Oh, this is going to be fun. incredibly dark here 360 degrees I mean not only is this an area that is pretty low in terms of light pollution but we're 5,000 meters in altitude so the light pollution is down at 2,400 meters in San Pedro de Atacama and the mines on the Salar so I'm above the little light pollution that there is but also being 5,000 meters up I'm looking through less of Earth's atmosphere to see the night sky so the stars are noticeably less twinkly because there's less atmosphere between me and space. And the air here is incredibly dry, so the clarity is just superb. So I'm going to find some compositions and uh, get some shots. As I hadn't had a chance to scout the area, I just wandered around trying some single exposures until I found a composition that I felt was worth working and spending a bit of time on. But sadly, as Sean had only just returned from a sea level location and had not had a chance to acclimatize, we were only allowed to stay at the 5000 meter altitude plateau for two hours. So we don't have much time uh, on the plateau tonight. I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. No, you're doing a great job. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed I'd be still standing there going, mm -hmm. what do I want to do? <laughs> I know, there's just so much to uh, take in, but I've got a shot here with the Southern Hemisphere region of the Milky Way, the Vela region, the Large Magellanic Cloud on the left. I'm just going to do a quick stack of 12 images <coughs> because I don't want to set up the Star Tracker just yet because uh, it might take up quite a lot of time. But, right. but unfortunately, I couldn't stack the images because the telescopes were moving during some of the frames. So I ended up editing a single exposure, which I was a little bit gutted about because I really liked the composition. I love the diminishing size of the telescopes. It really helps the image to feel three-dimensional and there's a lot of nice diagonal lines that are working really well together in the composition. As you can see, there's a wicked display of green air glow forming. This is looking good. I'm going to get this one done and then see what other compositions we can find. And then when the Milky Way core comes up a little bit higher, start doing some Milky Way arch panoramas. Great. Maybe a 360 VR panorama, like I did last time, but this time. And these incredible dark skies. No. Isn't it phenomenal? It is amazing. I mean, that if you're hearing a high pitched noise, I do apologise. I'm going to try and edit it out of the rest of the vlog, but I'm just going to let Sean explain. You might be hearing a noise in the background a little bit, and that's the sound of the antennas moving. 25 of our antennas have a classic gearbox drive, and you, as they move ever so slightly from the calibrator sources, to the target sources that we're looking at um, because because they weigh so much there's quite a lot of acceleration required so there's a lot of force to move the the antennas yeah get those gloves on mate yeah <laughs> i got two pairs on so the star trek has come out the milky way was too tempting rising in the southeast We've got the Star Trekker out, 
polar aligned by setting the latitude we're at, which is Sean. It's minus 22. <laughs> minus 22, <laughs> correct. Um, very close to the Tropic of Capricorn. And um, after I'd set that elevation, it's about aiming the, the tracker towards the south. And the best way to find the south in the southern hemisphere is to look at the Southern Cross. Yeah. And, uh, and look at um, Alpha and Beta Centauri, yeah, right the next to stars. the, and then um, you draw a line perpendicular to the pair in Centauri, and where that line perpendicular to the pair meets the direction that the Southern Cross is pointing is the center of the Southern uh, uh, Pole. And when you when you get used to searching for it, regrettably there's no bright stars there. It's ba and it's basically the middle of nowhere. But it's quite a lot harder than trying to find Polaris. Yeah, Polaris is a dream. You can just stick it in the polar scope and you're exactly. good to go. <laughs> yeah, the antenna's moving ever so slightly. Fortunately, the telescope stayed still for one of my two-minute foreground exposures, and then I captured two two-minute exposures for the sky with the star tracker, stitched them into a mini panorama, and then blended them onto the foreground image. And if you're wondering how I did that, I made a video about this exact image a few weeks ago, so check that out if you haven't already. It's probably a bit nicer when you go to the beach in uh, Tenerife or <laughs> Menorca, right? A little bit warmer. Definitely easier to work in, yeah. Yeah. But the tougher shots are always the ones that feel more worth it in the end. And we've got oxygen tanks on, which are mandatory, up on the plateau of Alma. But I can tell you it's really nice to have the extra oxygen because when I'm out under the stars I like to bounce about different compositions and work as quickly as possible. And I think without the oxygen I'd probably be on the floor panting right now. sitting on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sitting on the ground or lying on the ground. So the other thing to note is we're right in the middle of Alma in amongst our collection of 66 antennas. 54 of them are 12 meters diameter and tonight, they're all working. The uh, 12 meter array is doing one experiment. The seven meter array, which is about 300 meters behind us, is doing another observation. And then we have four total power antennas and they're doing other observations. So it's a busy night here on the plateau. And what's amazing is there's hardly any wind. Very which is lucky. very, very rare. Yeah, I was on the Bolivian Altiplano last night and it was so windy that I just couldn't go outside. It was crazy. <coughs> <coughs> and Alan has got a bit of a cough. Oh, I've been roughing it. So he's doing amazingly well for being at 5,000 meters. <laughs> When you get an opportunity like this, nothing's going to stop me. <laughs> so I grabbed this quick panorama with the 14mm lens. It was two rows of five images at f2, ISO 1600 and 20 second exposure. And I really wanted to use the tyre tracks in the foreground to mirror the arch of the Milky Way. And I think it worked out pretty well. Just watching it makes me really appreciate even more just how important it is to understand how, you kit, how your kit works yeah. before you get outside. Oh yeah, and in the dark. Yeah, in the dark, cold, whatever. It's, uh, you spend, you will waste so much good time otherwise. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm amazed at the speed you're going at compared to the speed I go at. <laughs> I'm always faffing about, trying to figure out what do I have to do. And it also shows 
it really shows they need to plan. Yeah. Like have a really good idea what you want to try and do. Yep. So right now I'm going to do a 360 VR panorama. And how many shots are you going to take in that panorama? So with a 14 mil, it'll take eight shots okay. around the horizon. And, and does this automatically move around? No, the... sadly not. Yeah, oh, you have to move it. Yeah, I'm going to have to move it. But eight shots around the horizon, three for the sky, then three for the ground. Oh, I see. You do it in three slices. Slightly yeah. different elevations. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Which way are you going to do it? Right, so... Get this out of the way first. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to do it to the south. So... To with the southeast, sorry. <coughs> I should start facing south, because they're the stars that move the slowest. So by the time I get all the way back around, it wouldn't have moved very much. So this 360 VR panorama was my last image of the night. And this is what it looks like as an equi-rectangular panorama. But if you head on over to my website, you can experience it in VR mode and take a look around. And it looks especially cool if you have a VR headset to try it out on. Sean kindly offered to take me up again the following night but unfortunately, he failed the medical. His blood pressure was too high and he wasn't allowed to go up to the plateau. Thankfully, Marcus comes to the rescue. Marcus head of mechanical operations here at Alba. And uh, he's brought me up here for sunset. And um, then I'm gonna do some twilight photography and then hopefully set up a star trail and leave it up here for quite a few hours because Star Trail is something I failed at last time I was here, so I'm really hoping that I can pull it off tonight. The telescopes looked amazing basking in the last light of the sun. And after the sun set, the belt of Venus and Earth's shadow was so stunningly vibrant. And as darkness settled in, the moon started to shine bright in the sky. So I'm trying to look up where to set up for a star trail. Yeah. I'm just going to talk to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is the scopes move quite frequently, whether they're tracking something in the sky or moving to a new target. And so if I set up a star trail and they move, it's just not gonna work. And so one idea is to shoot in this direction where there's a few scopes, but they're backdropped by the mountains. And so if they move, it's not gonna matter because the horizon is on the mountains. The other option is uh, there's one scope up there which seems to be in sleep mode and uh, it's not operational right now. So we're gonna double check that and maybe I can get up close to that one and do some nice star trails with a big scope in the frame because it's kind of a boring shot, but yeah, we'll see. So we checked with operations and thankfully that telescope was in maintenance mode. So hopefully it was gonna stay still for the entire night. So I set up my star trail and we headed back down for some food and to wait for the moon to set. So I think tonight I'm going to focus on the southern hemisphere night sky because it's probably going to be my last night shooting in the southern hemisphere for potentially a long time. So I'm going to go for things like the Magellanic Cloud, the Gum Nebula in uh, the Vedo region of the Milky Way, the normal region of the Milky Way and um, yeah then shoot some more panoramas when the Milky Way is arching nicely so just gonna try and fill my boots so I've got a composition with a few of the antenna here and the gum nebula it's the biggest nebula in apparent size in the night sky. It's absolutely enormous. 
Very similar in size to the winter circle asterism of stars, which is a giant nebula that's believed to be the remnants of a supernova explosion. Uh, but it's very faint and difficult to see, even with an astral modified camera. So I'm taking some normal exposures, some RGB exposures, and then also some exposures with the hydrogen alpha filter, and I'll merge those into a HARGB image, in which you should be able to see the gum nebula a lot better. And this was my final image. It was an absolute nightmare to stitch and blend, but I got there in the end, and I'm really happy with the final result. I didn't have any good images of the gum nebula prior to this trip, and I think this is one I will treasure for years. So, just shooting a simple panorama. Two rows, using the 14mm lens, single exposures for each panel. F2.5, ISO 1600, and about 20 seconds for each exposure. There's some absolutely insane <laughs> green air glow tonight. So I'm really worried about these images because the sky is just completely green. Thankfully the air glow wasn't as bad as I thought it was and it ended up just adding a nice splash of colour to the sky and I even managed to capture the gub nebula without using the hydrogen alpha filter as well. And I love the two large telescopes either side of the arch kind of acting like bookends to the panorama and framing it nicely. Now having a bit of fun with the 135mm lens, the large Magellanic cloud has sort of come down to the horizon, I'm just getting that with a distant antennae looking pretty good even with a rough polar alignment getting one minute exposures very minimal trading just a little bit but it's not too bad it's just that this green air glow is so crazy so you can see there's orange and green air glow and this time around I'm not really sure if I like it I'm not sure if I prefer it to not be there at all let me know what you think in the comments down below. Alright, so we are running out of time and it's getting bitterly cold. So we're just going to go and collect the star trail. Hopefully that's gone well. If it has, I'll show it to you now. But thanks for watching another episode. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you find it useful, if you have, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck in clear skies.